Hello everyone, Alex with Beam It Up. Today we're going to continue with our Revit for Beginners series. We're going to dig a little bit into architecture and some Revit basics. I keep being asked about the architectural background that I use in most of my videos. So I figured it could be useful for those who don't have a background to be able to create some basic backgrounds. So that's what we're going to go over today. Keep in mind that by no means this is uh, meant to be an in-depth architectural rigorous video. This is just, you know, uh, to get you going if you don't have anything, okay? If you do want to get a little bit more in-depth into architecture, uh, I would recommend the Balkan Architect uh, channel. That guy has great content in Revit architecture, uh, so I would highly recommend him. Now we're going to go over some basics, as I just mentioned. We're going to talk a little bit more about the user interface itself. We're going to be linking a DWG file into a Revit model, which comes really handy many times. You know, you may be using a kitchen background or an equipment background from a lab consultant or an, even an architect that doesn't have a background. So this can be handy. We're going to be creating some walls. We're going to use that to talk about instant properties versus type properties. That's a very important concept that you have to be very clear about in order to be successful in Revit. We're going to be talking about the different methods of uh, selection in Revit. We're going to talk about angular or polar tracking in Revit. Uh, and we're going to talk about temporary dimensions and a few other things. So stick around and you'll learn something. See you in Revit. And before we even start, think about it, it makes sense. If you like this kind of content, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. You hit that bell so you get notifications. You don't miss any of our videos. Sometimes you'll be in need of uh, linking in a DWG file. Let's say another one of your consultants is not working in Revit, but they work in AutoCAD. Let's say a kitchen consultant maybe a lab consultant that is not working in Revit, or even an architect. Let's say our architect is not working in Revit, but we still want to use Revit to model our systems. So we can always come here to Manage, Manage Links, and then here under CAD Formats, we can click on Add. Then navigate where I have my AutoCAD files stored. These are ones that I previously exported from Revit, actually. In this case, I'm going to preserve the colors, I'm going to keep all the layers. Uh, I'm going to keep uh, the import units as auto detect. This typically does a pretty good job. And I'm going to keep the positioning as uh, auto origin to origin. And I'm going to place at level one because I'm importing level one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to click OK. So this is my DWG file that I just brought in. So I'm going to move these elevations here, just place it, let's say, here, and then this other elevation, I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to place it here, and then this guy, I'm going to place it here, and then this guy, I'm going to place it here. And then if you want to know where this lives in our project, you can go here, manage links, and then CAD format is right here. So you can reload, reload from, etc. Let's say I want to take a little relevance off this guy. So I want to make it like half tone. I would come here to imported categories and here I find my floor plan level one. I can click here on half tone and then I'm going to take it to the side so you can see it. I click OK and there you go. So you start a command. By the way, notice that there's no command bar here anymore, like in AutoCAD. Uh, but you have all the tools you need here in the ribbon, okay? And you have your shortcut keys, uh, keystrokes. We'll be talking about that in the future. So let's let's do a wall, right? So I click here on the wall, and now this is my options bar right here. And here you can change the properties of the element that you are including in your model. So if I want to change the height of this wall, let's say to, because if I, if I go to, let's go to north elevation, for example, and I see that from level one to, to the roof, in this case, we only have one level, uh, we have 12, eight. 
So if we're here and I'm drawing a wall and I do that wall as 14 feet, then it's going to go through my roof. So let's say we want to do 12, 8, right? And let's do some exterior walls here. Let's eyeball it. I'm using this CAD file just as a reference. And you don't have to be perfect. That's one of the beauties of Revit, that you can just pretty much sketch something real quick, and then you will adjust. So I'll show you later how we do that. For now, I'm just going to do kind of a rough envelope of this building. And then I'm just going to close it up here. One of the commands that you may be familiar with is trim. It's TR for shortcut. I can select these two walls and I will trim it very nicely. Also notice that if I do, let me do CS for create similar. So when you have the wall command active, you get this contextual ribbon. This is pretty typical in all the Windows application. So the contextual ribbon applies to the command that you're in. So let's say I go into systems and I click on pipes, then I have a bunch of tools that are related only to pipe. So I'm going to create a default 3D view. It's going to become useful. For that, you can come here to the doghouse and just click it. That's my 3D view right there. So I'm going to hit window tile, that's WT for shortcut. And what I want to show you here is that it, there are different types of properties. One of them, there are what are called instant properties or instance parameters, which apply only to the selected element. For example, if I click on this wall right here, this wall has a height, right? And it's 12, 8. So if I were to change that value here from 12, 8 to, let's say, 18 feet. By the way, if you don't hit anything, the default unit is feet. And you can do 18 space two and that will be 18 feet two inches you'll see me type in the whole thing because i'm just used to auto academy p so if i were to do 18 four i would do 18 then eight and then do like this so that takes a little longer i'm just you know if you're starting from scratch and you're learning you might as well learn the fastest way which would be you know 18 space zero and that would take you to 18 feet Anyway, so, so those are your instance parameters, right? Anything that you can change here, you know, the base offset is zero feet. That means that is the wall starting at finished floor. If I were to change this to, let's say four feet, then this starts a little higher. So I'm gonna click on do. And, and those are your instance parameters. Then you have your type parameters. Type parameters are accessed via edit type. So those are the ones that you can change here, you know, and those would affect all the generic eight inch walls that I have in the project. So you see, when I click here, this is a generic eight inch wall. When I click here, this is a generic eight inch wall. When I click here, this is a generic eight inch wall. So if I change that, and let's say I, 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 I come here, well, this is probably not as, as simple of an example because I would have to change the structure here and then change the the eight inches here to let's say 12 inches right click OK OK and then you see how all my walls thicken so if I click here now this is a 12 inch I mean it's still called eight inches but you saw how it got how it grew to 18 so I'm gonna hit undo so I didn't want to do that and I'm gonna take it back to my original state and that's a very important concept, so I'll be hammering on it for a while until you get it straight, okay? So for now, uh, let's talk a little bit about selections. Uh, if you select left to right, anything that you include in that selection gets selected. If you select right to left, anything that crosses that selection boundary gets selected. That's pretty similar to AutoCAD. And then you have the tab select, which is I, I, I hover over it and I tab and see anything that was connected to that gets selected. I'll do it again. 
click here, tab, and then you're selecting all the walls in the perimeter. Another component of the user interface is uh, the status bar. If I click on the wall, you can see how here it tells me click to enter wall starting point. So it kind of guides you a little bit. See how it says space flips orientation. So it kind of gives you a hint of you know what Revit is expecting you to do. So let's use that tab select here to select all my perimeter walls. And since those are all exterior walls, I'm going to go ahead and change them from the basic generic to, let's see what we can find here, uh, exterior brick on CMU. This is a nice wall for an exterior wall, right? So I'm going to do tile window, TW, to on tile my windows. And I'm going to change the detail level here that I have as course. i place it as medium. See how I see more details on that? It's a pretty complex wall, as you can see. And all that you can modify from the edit type menu here. See if I go to edit type and I go into structure, you can see all the layers right here. You can even preview like that. So these are all your layers. And those are wall layers, not to be confused with, you know, like AutoCAD layers. And as you can see, it has a bunch of properties here, like thermal resistance, mass, heat transfer coefficient, which is that U value that our HVAC guys need so much, and so on. So I'm just going to hit cancel here. And another thing that can become useful, sometimes you have this turn on, and then it's hard to see what's going on. So if you go ahead and click here on thin lines, you make everything clearer for you to see. So let me take a step back here and just activate the wall command, right? I want you to notice that if I start drawing and I click here and I go to the right, you see how first I have a dashed line in the middle of the wall. It is in the middle of the wall because I have it here. You see where it says location line, wall center line? That's why. I could change that also to have that uh, reference line on, on the edge of the wall, but for now I'm going to keep it in the center. And as you can see, it's kind of snapping in inch increments, and the inch increments depend on how far away I am. So if I zoom out a lot, you know, it can probably go foot by foot or six by six. Then as I zoom in, I can get a little more granular. So um, the other thing you notice here is that this temporary dimension here, if I click here, then that dimension gets set as say five nine, right? If I wanted to change it, I could do, yeah, let's say I want eight six, I would do eight feet six inches, right? Or let me hit undo, I could also say a eight space six. So by default, the first value is feet, and then if you hit space and then the other number is going to be the inches. You can also do that as you're placing the wall. So if I hit eight space six and I hit enter, that's my wall, eight, eight feet, six inches. Notice also that if I wanted to do, let's say a rectangular building, right? I go like this, let's say I want uh, 20 feet, 20 by 10, let's say. So I do 20, right? And now also notice that I don't have an ortho mode right now. But the snapping angles that I find are can be changed. They can be, right now I have it at 45, at 90, and 135. So for now I'm going to keep it like this. So those angle values at which the, the wall or the pipe are going to snap can be set up on your project standards. What was called in AutoCAD the polar options. So say so we're going to do 20 by 10. So I'm going to do 10 here. And now I want, to know, I want you to notice that as I get closer to the edge of the other wall, you see how I get that tracking line here? So that's perfectly aligned. So I can do like this and I can simply close. This is a perfect rectangle. And if you're enjoying the content, there are many ways you can support it. You can like, subscribe, and leave a nice comment down there. You can spread the word, you know, share it, with your co-workers and relevant social media. 
You can join our Patreon community at the address listed on the screen. It's also in the description. And if you know any small MVP firms that could use BIM implementation services, you can recommend me. Now, as far as the temporary dimensions, if I click on this wall, and this is a little counterintuitive. It, it took me a little bit when I started. It, what this is telling me is that the center line of this wall is 20 feet away from the center line of this other wall, right? So if I want to change this dimension, since this is the element that is being highlighted, if I change this from 20 to 30, right, and I hit enter, then that element is the one that's going to move. As opposed to if I click on this wall and I do 25 and I hit enter, then that's the wall that gets um, shifted to the other side. Also, you can change where this temporary dimension is measuring from. For example, I can grab this from here and place it here. And then if I click on this wall, it would be measuring from the exterior face of this wall to the center line. If I want to the exterior of this wall, I could simply just click here as well. And you can hit tab and it takes it to the exterior. So that would be your exterior dimension. So that's the beauty of this parametric drafting that, you know, you kind of like sketch it out real rough and then you modify depending on what you want. So let me recap the selection modes again. Um, if you go from left to right, you have to fully include the element for it to be selected. So for example, that top wall right there, it's not being selected yet until I select the whole thing, until I encompass the whole thing. Right, so that's one way. The other way is the crossing window. So if I go from right to left, then as soon as I touch that wall, the whole thing gets selected, you see? So as soon as I touch it, it gets selected. And the other one is if I hover over the wall and I click tab and then click, everything gets selected. So we're gonna use that, let me delete this. And let's use that to select this complex exterior wall right here. And let's just change it back to that uh, a generic eight inch. Cause you know, we're MEP engineers and we won't be spending too much time uh, drawing walls. So let's go ahead and tap select this exterior walls. I'm gonna change it to, let's say eight inch masonry. And that's good for me for now. Also, you wanna keep an eye on our website, bimitup.com, because we're coming up with some new full courses, not only in Revit, but in mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection, and other topics. And if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you like it down there, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.